Hello, good morning, everyone. So, um, this is the continuation of the module. Um, I think module two, part one, that I have recorded last time, and this is the part two as to what I have promised. Magtiwas sa ato ang discussion. Pero before kung continue sa mga foundations of um. Uh, curriculum development or foundation sa curriculum, let me first review the things that we have discussed last time. So, of course, we have discussed about the curriculum development processes and model. So, next is, or we have discussed about curriculum planning. Again, kung may the curriculum planning, we're talking about the school, the vision, the mission, and the goals of the school. So, for example, if makita ni mo ang yes, it is mission, vision, um, missions, vision, and goals are like this, that would be considered as curriculum planning. So, it also includes the philosophy or strong education of the school. So, if you'll we'll be talking about the philosophy of the school, the belief of the school about education, that, that, then that can be considered as curriculum planning. Next is curriculum designing from the word design. So, say pa about the design, kumain ka, design na nato ang cake. Say may tabo, so more imang ipabitify. So, we are talking about conceptualizing the whole curriculum. So, ato nang imagine gi visualize na to, ay nga ni ang mahitabo, puhon, if ako nang i-present ng curriculum sa ako ang mga students. And it is the way curriculum is conceptualized to include the selection, the organization of content, how the contents be implemented through learning experiences or activities. So, yung nga na ang curriculum designing. Ngayon sa the curriculum implementing, we're walking the talk, meaning we are putting the plan into action. So, kung sa ito ang plan, from curriculum planning, we are putting it into action by making everything happen. It's our real life situation. Okay, so it is based on the curriculum design in the classroom setting or in the classroom environment. So, magdepende ang atong implementation sa atong design, sa atong plan, sa kanang setting sa atong classroom, and of course, the learning environment sa ato ang mga students. Next is curriculum evaluation. Kung may the curriculum evaluation, we are talking about the outcomes. If the outcomes have been achieved by the students or not. Okay? So, kung may ito, again, the curriculum evaluating determines the extent to which the desired outcomes have been achieved. So, ang procedure sa curriculum evaluating Actually, we have four assessments. We have the placement, the diagnostic, the formative, and the summative assessments. But, um, kani sila is ginagamit sila in certain situations or in certain ways nga pwede ma-apply sa ito ang mga students. And of course, magamit sa ito ang mga students. The result of evaluation is very important, guys. Please, please kwana, keep in mind that the result of evaluation is very important. Why? Because it is for us to know if na ba improvement itong mga students, uh, positive ba ang result or outcome, na ba tayo kinahalan i-change sa curriculum or at lang i-delete ang whole curriculum and magama taog bago. So, yung nga na ang curriculum evaluation. Now we are going to the curriculum development process models. So these are the people who are involved in the curriculum development. First and foremost, we have Ralph Tyler. Again, ang yang gigama is ang Tyler's rationale. And in a form of questions, ang yang four fundamental principle, which game prove ni Hilda Taba and gitawag ang yang approach of grassroots approach 
now keep this in mind kay appeal na siya sa ato ang preliminary exam feel the taba ang iyang model is grassroots approach she just improved uh, kung unsay gi gama ni uh, Ralph Tyler and gitawag siya grassroots approach approach rather kay di ba ko may ka grassroots roots sa grass so we are talking about the bottom layer or the bottom part of the grass right so since she just improved what Ralph Tyler have uh, made so gasugod siya sa bottom so she believed that teachers should participate in developing the curriculum so that's why she proposed um, what Tyler has or she improve what Tyler has proposed so gasugod siya sa bottom and this is what she arrived. So first is diagnosis of learners' needs and expectations of the lar uh, larger society. Formulation of learning objectives. Yes, it's very important. Nga itong una ko na objectives. Selection of learning contents. Of course, the subject matter. Um, organization of learning content. Selection of learning experiences. Determination of what to evaluate. And the means of doing it second people nga involved ani are gallant sailor and william alexander so si gallant sailor and william alexander um ang ilang gi proposed about curriculum um consists of four steps so they also viewed a, a curriculum as a development of as consisting of four steps and they define curriculum as a plan for providing sets of learning opportunities to achieve broad broad educational goals so um it's very clear that they have these perspectives and views that the curriculum is really a plan right it, it is a plan of um of course we provide sets we provide activities, we provide content for our students so that my enhance na tong knowledge. So there are steps in um in what they have proposed. So since four steps mantusha, we have this first step, the goals, objectives, and the domain. So say na sa goals, objectives, and the domain. So yes. Curriculum planner begin by specific, specifying the major educational goals. Yes, it's very important that if we make our own curriculum, we should set our objectives and goals because um, it's the same with making our lesson plan. And then on the first part of the lesson plan, we have our objectives. Why do we need to make our objectives? Because we want that our students will achieve something at the end of the discussion or our uh, or we can see that our students have been improving or ato ang mga students na stagnant ang ilang knowledge wala sila na learn gagmay ang ilang kwa sa lesson so that's why we have to change the curriculum we have to improve the curriculum because ingani ang nahitabo that is why it's very important also that if we students have goals and objectives kay kabalotag unsa yata ang kinahanglan ma-attain ma-achieve after our education or our studies second one is the goals objectives and domains are identified and chosen based on research findings so the goals objectives and domains are of course identified on the research findings for example, on the first part sa to ang klase, we have that pre-test or we have that um, short quiz to know if our students nabasilag ka ng um, stock knowledge about ani nga topic, nabay ga-exist nga knowledge ay laha about ani nga topic. Kay if we see or if we saw and we have, we have observed that these students have certain um, pre-existing knowledge about this topic, then it would be easier for us to choose what kind of objectives are we going to apply for these students or are we going to, to have for this lesson. Nga kinhanglan maating sa students 
after sa discussion. So that is the first step according to Galen no, and Sailor. We have the second step, the curriculum designing. So what does curriculum designing mean? So a designing a curriculum is very important because we follow certain um, appropriate learning opportunities for our students. And so curriculum designing, these learning opportunities are being determined and how this opportunity being provided. So of course, we have to design the curriculum that this curriculum is a learner-centered, which is very important, a learner-centered. When you dapat, dayon, since learner-centered man siya, dapat ang activities nga ako ang ihatag sa kong students, pang learner-centered sa dili siya pang teacher-centered. Because I know that I am the one nga mo facilitate lang sa teaching and learning process. Okay? I hope that nakasabot ang tanan. Third is curriculum implementation. So it is the same kanina. Ano, kata akong ipaingon sa inyo as a curriculum. It is actually the same. But they have that certain um, explanation. Ganong ingani ang ilang third step. So curriculum implementation, in the word implement, we are walking in the top. We are taking actions of what we have planned and conceptualized. So, a design curriculum is now ready for implementation, of course. Kaya nga agi naman siya several plans, several revisions, and na nakayin mo ang final nga design curriculum. So, pwede na nyo siya i-implement sa mukhang mga students. So, teachers, um, mag-i-prepare sa teachers is mga instructional plans, mga visual aids, mga PowerPoint presentations, mga activity sheets, which are um, specified and appropriate teaching methods and strategies are utilized. So let me remind everybody that there is no single best learning method, learning strategy, or learning approach because again and again, the learners that we have inside the classroom are different from each other. They have their own uh, interests, needs, uh, learning styles, and etc. So, kung different na mga students, dili pa din nga, kana yung mga isa ka teaching approach, mora dyan na yung gamiton the whole semester because dili ni mo makikater ang differences sa yung mga, mga students. Next is curriculum evaluation or simply evaluation. From the word evaluate, we're trying to know if there is such an improvement or wala. Right? So it should improve or it should involve the total educational program of the school and the school plan. So here, we will know the effectiveness of our instructions and we will know the achievements of our students. So if there is no improvements, um, no certain achievements of our students, then it's time for us to change our curriculum to really modify our curriculum or to restructure our curriculum. So, muna siya ang according to kang Galen and Sailor. Char, isa rin din sila. Sailor and Alexander. So, these steps are coming from them. So, next is, we will, okay. So, let's take a break. Um, Kindly practice or do the simple breathing exercise. Inhale and exhale. Let's do it for five times. Inhale, exhale. Again, inhale, exhale. Another inhale, exhale. Uh, exhale sharply through your mouth, ha? Dili through your nose. Kaya basta manggawa sa mga sipon. Last, inhale. Exhale. Very good. So, well, um, dili pa taga sugod, kindly drink your um, water beside you. Um, eat your foods or your ano, uh, merienda or whatever your meal. So, that dili ta mga goto. No? This is the continuation of our module 2 and this is included on our prelim examination. Okay. So next, I hope we we'll take a break. Take a break. Um, let's now discuss the foundations of curriculum development. So who are these people? Nga na belong 
or nag-propose uh, o mga information, um, mga ideas regarding the curriculum development. So we have to know who are these people in order for us to apply it in our teaching and learning process and sulod sa to ang classroom management. So first is we will discuss on the philosophical foundation. How does the philosophy of a certain person apply to the certain um, curriculum or the certain uh, class no? or in the teaching and learning process? So first is we have the premialism. This ism, -ism is very um, popular when we talk about the professional education subjects and if you will take your licensure examination for teachers. Ano mga ising isang beto, no? Kaya lisod kayo siya ikuan, i-apply sa itong life or lisod kayo siya i-remember kay very pare-parehas yung ideas. Dayon, um, we are talking about certain things nga makalimutan pa dyan ito. But um, I'm glad to let you know that um, we will be using such keywords for our discussion sa aning mga foundations of CURDEV. So first is we have the aim. Okay, we have the perennialism. Um, its aim is to, of course, educate the rational person. When the rational person ang gina-educate, we are talking about perennialism. Okay? Perennialism, rational person, cultivate intellect. Okay, so muna siya ha, remember about that for a while ha. I will try to find my chair. Okay, sorry for that delay. Um, I just got my chair. Okay, pag may ng perennialism, we are talking about uh, educating the rational person. Mara dyan yung keep in mind. Kung may ngayon sa question, educating the rational person, the answer is perennialism. Second one, it's, it's focus on classical subjects, literary analysis. Kung may ngayon classical subjects, literary analysis, we're talking about perennialism. It's its focus. Ang focus of perennialism is classical subjects and literary analysis. Okay? Its role is the teacher delay is teacher assists students to think with reason. So since uh, atong gina-educate is mga rational person, ang atua pong kanang role as teacher, we are assisting the students to think with reason. So we are applying the critical thinking and we are activating the higher order thinking skills. So since its focus is on classical subjects, then we are using the great books like the Bible, the Quran, and the other classic snap books. And of course, liberal arts. So one is perennialism. Again, ang aim is rational person to cultivate intellect. Second is ang focus niya is classical subjects, literary analysis, and of course, curriculum is enduring. Um, ang role sa teacher is to assist the students to think with reason, and we are activating the higher order thinking skills of the students. And of course, ang focus niya nga book is mga great books like um, the Book of Confucius, um, Bible, the Quran, the classics, the liberal arts, something that is or something that has to do with classics. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. We have the essentialism. From the word essential. Essential and lugaw. Essential, very important, crucial, relevant. So that is the um, same same like meaning essential. So its aim is to really promote the intellectual growth of the learners to become competent. So kanina is to educate man the rational person. Pero essentialism, 
um, we are promoting the intellectual growth of learners to become competent, all right? And what is its focus? Essential skills of three R's. So what are the three R's? Reading, writing, arithmetic. Again, we make three R's. We're focusing on the reading, writing, and arithmetic and essential skills or the basic skills. Okay. So, kumain ko sa question. Um, this type of philosophical foundation focuses on the essential skills or the basic skills mainly for students or children para ma-promote ang ilang intellectual growth that answer is essentialism okay what is the role of the teacher very good teachers are sole authorities in the subject area that is why we consider it as a teacher-centered nga philosophical foundation kay ang teacher ang nine soul authorities. Meaning, si teacher tanan ang masunod sa classroom setting. Okay? So, si trend sa essentialism, back to basic siya class, excellence in education and cultural literacy. Kung may yun, back to basic siya nga certain type of uh, philosophical foundation we're talking about Essentialism. Back to basic, essential, uh, essential skills. Three R's, the reading, writing, arithmetic, essentialism. Essential subjects, essentialism. Promote intellectual growth of learners to become competent, essentialism. Um, if teachers are the sole authorities of the area, essentialism. Third is progressivism, from the word progress. This is connected to the 21st century education because we are focusing on or we are really um, making it uh, to a point that our students, our learners are learning from us and have the progress inside our class. So its aim is to promote democratic social living. Nga democratic social living man siya class because the students have the right to ask questions, have the right to clarify, have the right to answer, have the right to um, uh, the one nga mag, uh, authority, authorities area. For example, if the teacher is making the student report in front of the class, so it's in the student's hands naman, right? Nga if siya mo yung mag um, discuss, then siya po yung mga sabah sa mga tabian. Siya po yung mag-conduct of mga quizzes, or tests. That is why na belong siya sa progressivism. Focus of progressivism is interdisciplinary subjects. Kung may nang interdisciplinary subjects, uh, we are integrating all the disciplines or all the subjects. So, si mathematics na integrate sa science, si English na integrate sa science, mathematics, Si values education na integrate sa tanang subject. So that is uh, interdisciplinary subject. Integrating of one discipline to another discipline. Learner-centered and outcome-based. Gano'n learner-centered man siya because we are involving the learner in the actual process of the teaching and learning. All right? And outcome-based siya because um, we are also trying to see if the learners have learned a lot from your discussion or wala ba sila na learn that is why kumuyon ka progress of visa we are trying to see if nai progress ang atong learners um nag improve ba ang atong learners or what and this type of philosophical foundation is learner centered the first two the perennialism and the essentialism are teacher centered okay Okay, very good. If nakasabot mo, um, kindly nod your head. Nod your head for two times. One, two. Okay. Third is, what is the role of the teachers in the progressivism? The teacher leads for growth and development of lifelong learning. But na kayo sa akong background, no? And ay mga motor. Oh, 
Okay, so ang role sa teacher, dire sa progressivism, leads for growth and development. Diba? Kung may yun progressivism, kung may yun ka gina monitor ni mga mga students every day. So of course, you are really monitoring or you are really leading for growth and development sa mo ang mga learners or sa mo mga students. Alright. So main ka trends, ang trends sa uh, progressivism, equal opportunities for all, meaning all have the right to uh, learn, all have the right to do this and that. So walay restrictions. Um, the students are given the right to to act, uh, be active inside our class. All right. Siro tago all right, all right. Ani contextualized curriculum and humanistic education. Kung ka humanistic. You're not really focusing on the grade if if your learners have improved in terms of their grades. Instead, you're focusing on how the learners learn in your class and how they would apply their learning sa mga klase silang everyday life. So that is progressivism. Mayan ka democratic living, progressivism, interdisciplinary subjects, learner centered, outcome based, progressivism. Um, teacher leads for growth and development, progressivism, equal opportunities, progressivism. Okay, those are the philosophical foundations that belong to Koridev. Now we have the historical foundation. So kumayin, the historical foundation, we're talking about the history, what happened in the past. So... The historical foundations will show us the chronological, chronological saktong pagkakasunod-sunod ng development um, following a certain timeline. So first, we have this person, Franklin Bobbitt, um, 1876 to 1956. Sayang na contribute ng theories and principles. Pag mayantag Franklin Bobbitt, Please take note of the keywords, curriculum development movement. Again, he started the curriculum development movement, Franklin Bobbitt, curriculum development movement. If this person emphasizes the student's needs, that is Franklin Bobbitt. If curriculum prepares learners for adult life, Franklin Bobbitt. Kumayantag objectives and activities are grouped together. That is from Franklin Bobbitt. So really, Franklin Bobbitt is focusing on the development of the child. He is trying to find out or he is trying to see that um, the curriculum is learner-centered and if it is focusing on the student's needs. Okay, so that is from Franklin Bobbitt. Second is from Ware Charters from 1875 to 1952. See, Ware Charters, um, yeah, is the same almost, kang Bobbit. He posited that curriculum is science and emphasizes students' needs. Kumayan ko posited that curriculum is science and emphasizes students' needs. That is from Charters or Ware Charters. So, kang Bobbit, ang iya ang objectives and activities should group together. Kang Wary Charters, ang objectives and activities should match. Meaning, dapat matchy-matchy no, ang atong objectives and subject matter. Kay, if ang atong objectives, dili siya matching sa atong subject matter. Dili na ito makita if atong learners na ba yung learn or na improvement nga na hita po. Alright. So, kung yung objectives is to identify the, the what and the this and the blah, tapos yung mga activity is to discuss, so, saan yung pagkita? Saan saan yung pag-measure if na-improvement ay mga mga students? So, nga na rin na siya. And this idea came from our charters. From Kilpatrick, William Kilpatrick. Okay, kung may yung William Kilpatrick, child-centered, and he said that curriculum is child development and growth. So, kumayantag Kilpatrick Project Method. Again, kumayantag Kilpatrick Project Method ang iya ang gi-propose. Where teacher and students 
plan the activities. Curriculum develops social relationships and small group instruction. Basta kung may tag-project method, kill Patrick, kill Joy. Baka kita ka, tag-project ni kill Patrick, kill Joy kay siya. O, nga na rin siya natapagtimaan. Um, yeah. Kung may tag-charters, kung charters, uh, objectives and activities, dapat gamatch. Okay? Nga na. Kung may tag-bobbit, um, objectives and activities group together. Um, it also emphasizes the students needs or prepare the students for adult life. Next is Harold Rog. Okay, Kumita Rog, Harold Rog, child centered. Okay, Kumita Harold Rog, letter H ang gauna, the correct, uh, the correct answer. The keyword for this is whole child. Develop the whole child. When you pronounce ito si whole child, H ang maguna. Ang yung pangalan is Harold Rugg, letter H. So, ang answer or ang connection is whole child, Harold Rugg. <laughs> okay? Di man na lang nato ang mga keywords so that it would be easier for us to answer in our prelim exam. Okay? Kumayantag should develop whole child. Uh, child centered that is from Harold Rugg. Okay, very good. Hollis Caswell again, Hollis Caswell subject matter is developed around social interest and learners' interest. Momentum social functions and learners' interest that came from Hollis Caswell. May tataglang keyword. Um, may tatag interrelated na word from Hollis Caswell. Curriculum, instruction, and learning are interrelated Caswell. Curriculum is organized around social functions of teams, knowledge, and learners' interest. Hollis Caswell. Very well said. Okay. All right. So that is from Hollis Caswell. Next is si Ralph Tyler. Yung balik ng si Ralph Tyler. Discuss ang tika ganiha. Ralph Tyler. Ang yan pang lantaw sa curriculum is science and extension of school's philosophy. Kung science and extension of school's philosophy, that is from Ralph Tyler. It is based on students' needs and interests. Okay. Um, curriculum is always related instructions and subject matter is organized in terms of knowledge, skills, and values. That is from Ralph Tyler. Basta kung may kung the process emphasizes um, problem solving, gikan gina siya kang Ralph Tyler. School's philosophy, Ralph Tyler. Okay? Sa atong prelim exam will be in the form of interactive quiz. The same sa atong gibuhat last time. Next is Hilda Taba. Hilda Taba is a girl. Clara man says yung name. Ang um, propose ni Hilda Taba or yung yung na contribute theoretical and pedagogical foundations of concepts. So kung mga gal 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 na mga kal 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 rather that is from Hilda Taba. Kung may tag theoretical and pedagogical foundation of concepts that is from Hilda Taba. So what did she help? She helped um, lay the foundation for diverse student um, population. So she knows that the student population is diverse, so she helped lay the foundation for it. So kinsana siya, Hilda Taba. Si Peter Oliva, maragnaong og artista. So, unsa kang Oliva, Peter Oliva, letter B, Endeavor, Cooperative. Um, he described how our curriculum changed in a cooperative behavior. Oliva, Peter Oliva, Cooperative Endeavor, Peter. Teachers and curriculum specialists constitute the professional core of planners. Letter P, Professional Core of Planners, Peter Oliva. 
So significant improvement is achieved through group activity. So on Peter Oliva, he was focusing or he is focusing on the group activity. So mana siya from Peter Oliva. So let us first review before we proceed to our next topic. Um, for historical foundations, we have these people behind. Um, kung asa ta karon, kung anong natay curriculum karon, and why is it learner-centered ang curriculum? First is Franklin Bobbitt. Okay, nga na ang yung contribution. Kumayang tag-wear charters, um, objectives and activities should match. Kumayang tag-Kilpatrick. Kiljig is Kilpatrick. Again, through the shock project method where students and teachers plan the activities. Kumayang tag-Harold Rugg. Um, age, whole child. Ayan, ginafocus. Hollis Caswell, kung may tawag, organized kayo ang social functions of themes, knowledge, and learner's interest. Very well organized. That is Hollis Caswell. Ralph Tyler, if ang yan nakita ng curriculum is an extension of school's philosophy, and curriculum is always related to instructions. So, muna siya kang Ralph Tyler. Kumingon tagang Hilda Taba, daghan siya nabuhat because she contributed to the theoretical and pedagogical foundations of concepts development. Peter Oliva, um, he described how curriculum change in a cooperative endeavor. So now let's move on to the psychological foundations of curriculum. Um, psychology provides a basis to understand the teaching and learning process. So it's very important that we should include the psychological foundations of curriculum so that we will know that dili lang the historical ang important but also ang psychological. We have the first person nga involved ani si Ivan Pablo. Okay? Pavlov is a very famous person when it comes to contributions and principles sa ito ang uh, curriculum, sa itong pag-school karon. So he is the father of um, the classical conditioning theory. So kung yan ka father of CC theory or classical conditioning theory, that is Pavlov. All right? Pavlov, classical conditioning theory. Um, S and R theory or the um, stimulus response theory. Ang answer niya po na is, is Ivan Pavlov. Because he believed that the key to learning in early years of life is to train them what you want them to become. So, ginatrain na to during a point or uh, time ang ato ang mga anak or ato ang mga students since bata pa man siya ang yang i-propose dere. Or ang yang gihatag na idea sa ito. Ah. So that is from Ivan Pavlov. SNR theory is foundation of learning practice called indoctrin indoctrination. Remember the term kong SNR theory is foundation of learning practice that is called as indoctrination. And kumain the father of classical conditioning theory, si Ivan Pavlov ang answer. And kumain the SNR theory, Pavlov Japon. Next, we have Edward Thorndike. What's the name Edward Thorndike? So Edward, Thorn Edward Thorndike, he championed the connectionism theory. So, if you have connectionism theory, Thorndike. Three laws of learning, readiness, exercise, and law of effect, that is from Thorndike. So, remember how sa yung propose nga common three laws um a law of readiness exercise and effect that is from edward thorndike and specific stimulus has specific response so he also stated that in the law of effect the specific stimulus has this certain specific response and please remember that Kumaytog SNR theory, the first person nga nag-coin ana is si Pablo. But Edward Thorndike also improved his idea and na siya gipang hatag na example sa tua. Pero pinaka-main point, Kumaytog uh, connectionism theory, 
si Thorndike na siya and three loss nga ang Yangi Purpose. Okay, Robert Gain or Gagne? Hierarchical learning theory. Moment kag hierarchical learning theory, we're talking about Robert Gain or Robert Gagne. <laughs> okay? So he proposed the hierarchical learning theory. Okay? He proposed the hierarchical learning theory. So learning follows a hierarchy. He believed that. And behavior is based on prerequisite condition. So kung sa itong behavior ka ron, ga-base na kung na siya sa nahitabo nga condition sa ito or prerequisite before nga nahitabo sa ito. And he also introduced uh, tasking in the formulation of objectives. So nice certain tasking in formulating the objectives. And that is from Robert. Kumain ka hierarchical learning theory, we're talking about Robert. And kumain ka, he stated that behavior is based on a prerequisite condition. We are also talking about Robert. Next is Jan Piaget, the very famous person in behind of these, kung sa'yo itong tinatamasa ngayon nga mga kwan, knowledge. Uh, ato ang mga na-learn while we are young or while we are in the field of teaching. So, yes, um, theories of Jan, Jan Piaget. Um, the cognitive development has stages from birth to maturity. So, he stated that the cognitive development or the, the development of our minds on how we think things, on how we think critically, has um, stages and it should start from birth to maturity. So, Sensory motor stage, it, it started from um, the birth and until two years old. So that is from sensory motor station. I believe that you have already discussed this in your child development classic. Second one is pre-operational stage. Before operational stage, um, age included are from two years old to seven years old. Concrete operations stayed from 7 years old to 11 years old and formal operations from 11 to onwards. So we are talking about on how the person thinks, on how the person thinks critically. So there are certain keys to learning and Yang Yi presents at one. Please be reminded or please um, remember these three keys to learning. First is assimilation. It is the incorporation of new experiences. Now keep in mind that when we say assimilation, we are incorporating new experiences to the um unsay atong na Juan karon. Unsay atong nagbras karon atong gi incorporate ang new experiences. All right? Kumain to accommodation, we are uh, modifying and adapting the learning or it is the learning modification and adaptation so night times now we have to modify the learning that we had or that we gather and to adapt the changes around us so that is accommodation we're accommodation uh, we are accommodating several knowledge several information about the thing that is why we modify the learning or we adapt the learning so, kumain to assimilate, we are incorporating new experiences to today's uh, learning or experience, diba? And third is equilibration, balance between previous and later learning. So, equilibration from the word equal is very important that there is a balance uh, to one teaching and learning process. So, we have to gather all the information from our previous or we have to balance our previous and later nga learning. So that is called equilibration. The first one is called assimilation and the second one is called accommodation. And these came from John Piaget. Si John Piaget, magbalik-balik na sa itong professional education nga subjects and mubalik na siya sa inyong lab. That is why you have to keep in mind of the important contributions ni Jan Piaget and inyo yung internalize ang mga bagay-bagay. Dili lang kayo butang na to sa atong short-term memory. Okay? So, yes. That is from Jan Piaget. 
Second is Lev Vygotsky. Second famous person sa professional education nga field si Lev Vygotsky. Unsay na ni Lev Vygotsky? We're talking about cultural transmission and development. It is very important that as teachers, we interact with our society. We let our students interact with our society. Dili lang kay sa atong classroom ra na to sila pa interact with each other. So the children actually perform certain cognitive actions prior to arriving at development stage. Okay? So that is cultural transformation and development of Lev Vygotsky. Um, he believed that learning precedes development. So learning yun na, guys. Ang learning yun ay magsugod before in development. Okay, how will you develop yourself? How will you develop some aspects of yourself if wala kayo na learn? And of course, he proposed or he was the proponent of the social-cultural development theory. Kung mayon kung social-cultural development theory, the answer is Lev Vygotsky, 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 social-cultural development theory. Kumayan ko keys to learning, pedagogy creates learning process that leads to development. This idea came from Lev's Lev Vygotsky. Si Vygotsky gusal anani. The child is an active agent on his or her educational process. If this idea mogawas niya sa any questions, this came from Vygotsky. Okay. That is the main difference of John Pedre and Lev Vygotsky. No? Um, they have their certain theories you can present sa to us. But theories pa man siya. It's still on... Um, we're trying to um, still prove if these theories happen in the everyday teaching and learning process. So anyway, even if we can, we prove it in our class. We... I think we can have the power to prove it para dili na siya mahimong theory pero some um, curricularists or some theorists I don't know if it's the exact term ka na makatag mga theory wala na lang nila gi-prove kay dili minsan na tumapil sa atong history na sila by Gotsky if ato na siyang ma-prove dili na to siya matawag og theory so mana siya from Lev by Gotsky Kani si Howard Gardner. Howard Gardner is a very famous nga contributor sa tuang curriculum development because si Howard Gardner is very famous sa yung Gardner Multiple Intelligences. Actually, it's already nine. Nine na siya. No? Because why? We have the linguistic, we have the logical, mathematical, we have the musical, spatial, Bodily kinesthetic, interpersonal, naturalistic, and experientialist. Or, I no, it's not experientialist. It's existentialist. Or, um, we are talking about a person's existence in this vast world, and if he or she believes that. He exists in this world because of this and that, then that, or he or she can be called as an existentialist person. Existentialistic person. So he believed that humans have several different ways of processing information, and these ways are relatively independent of one another. So that is from Howard Gardner. But Gardner, multiple intelligences, very quan, very um very madili na tumakalintan because yara apiliado who word gardener na siya and you have to know what are these um nine intelligences dili na siya eight you should know what are these nine intelligences para makapalo ninyo asa mo na belong if logical ba mo if linguistic ba mo if musical spatial bodily kinesthetic interpersonal or naturalistic wala gya pil ang intrapersonal dre because wala siya gyapil din nga ko discussion pero according to them pwede na ma-appeal si intrapersonal because we're dealing with our own self and kung may ito interpersonal we're dealing with other people but appeal na siya sa itong intelligences because there are some people that they only learn if they will are they are so focused on themselves mara siya ka Howard Gardner's actually 10 na dahil siya, no? Dili na siya 9. 
Okay, next is Daniel Goleman. Kumayang tag Daniel Goleman, ang yung focus is ang emotional quotient or atong EQ. Dili ang atong IQ ang yung gina-focus ha. Kumayang tag Daniel Goleman, ang yung gi-focus or ang yung gi Purpose is an emotional quotient or ang atuang EQ. Now they are telling us that IQ or having a high IQ is not enough because it's also important that we have the EQ and I think the AQ yata yun, the affective quotient because um, how or what can you do if a person has the high IQ but that person has no attitude or didi ka ng nice ang yung attitude, yung personality and all? So, wala rin hapon. Dapat yapon niya, i-keep in mind na ito nga. Dapat ito emotional quotient o affective quotient. Next is congestot. Suggestot theory, wala niya siya inawang because theory na siya. And it belongs on humanistic psychology. Why do we need to discuss about the humanistic psychology? Because inside the classroom, we should know why these learners do this and that and how the teachers would deal in such, uh, in such certain situations. Okay? Kumiyon ka just of theory, learning is explained in terms of wholeness of the problem. Wholeness of the problem, just of theory na siya class. Kumayang ka human being do not respond to isolated stimuli, but on organization or pa pattern stimuli, the answer is just out theory. And the keys to learning, learn is complex and abstract. Learning ana learners analyze the problem, discriminate between essential and non-essential data, um, perceive relationships. Learners will perceive something in relation to the whole. What or how they perceive is related to their previous experiences. And this is, or this belongs to the just out theory. Just out theory. Okay. Let's proceed to the second one. Na belong na siya sa humanistic psychology. We have Abraham Maslow. Ang kang Abraham Maslow is ang self-actualization theory. And... Um, classic theory of human needs. So, si Abraham Maslow. So, a child whose basic needs are not met will not be interested in acquiring knowledge of the world. And that is very true. If a more child or a mga student, yung mga learners, wala ni mo na meet ang ilang basic needs, ang ilang interest, so let's say mo ang classroom, then do, they do not have the interest anymore to listen to your class. That is why it's very important that as teachers, we should know first what are the differences of our students so that they can cater their needs and interests. So he also put importance to uh, human emotions based on love and trust. So comment this person is putting um, importance to human emotions based on love and trust. He is Abraham Maslow. And his keys to learning um, to produce a healthy and happy learners who can accomplish, grow, and actualize his or her human self. So self-actualization, actually in terms of um, a triangle, um, you can search the self-actualization theory of Abraham Maslow so that it would be clear to you nga na nga na ang self-actualization theory niya. The focus is a whole child. The focus is a whole person. And he put importance to the human emotions based on the love and trust. And he wants that... Um, we can produce healthy and happy learners who can accomplish, grow, and actualize his or her human health self further. And this is a very important um, um, action for teachers inside the classroom. Okay? Next is Carl Rogers. Comment of Carl Rogers. He or she is focusing. He rather. Well, I she. My gosh. Carl Nagani. Si Carl Rogers is focusing 
on the non-directive therapeutic learning. Ano ang itawag siyang non-directive um, therapeutic learning? Because he established the counseling and methods for facilitating learning. So, counseling, dyan yung kang Carl Rogers. Kung may yung counseling Carl Lo Rogers na siya, letter C, ang gawin na sa'yo ang alat. Children's perception, which are highly individualistic, influence their learning and behavior in class, of course. That is why na nahitabo ng mga counseling ano, sa mga, mga students so that it would be easier for the teacher to facilitate the learning. Non-directive therapeutic learning. Ganong non-directive because we are using words, we are using um, ideas, or we are using some actions that would really cater or that would really um, uh, facilitate or help the students in the teaching and learning, teaching and learning process. Okay. Key story le learning niya, curriculum is concerned with process, not product. Because as to what I have um, discussed last time, curriculum process is the most important part of the curriculum. Why? Because it is where the instructions, the implementing should be done. And it's up to you on how you implement the discussions in your class. Implement the things that you have written on your lesson plan sa mong klase. Diba? And it's, it's for you to know if your students during the class is listening, is interested with your lesson. Okay? So, ang keys to learning niya, curriculum is concerned with process, not product, personal needs, not subject matter, psychological meaning, not cognitive score. So, he is really focusing on the child development. He is really focusing on the child uh, personal needs rather than how the child um, perceives the subject matter. And he's focusing on the psychological meaning of the child. Dili ang cognitive nga scores. Now we have the schools and society. Since schools and society na belong to the social foundations, since we are dealing a lot of people, since we are doing the socializing, right? So in the picture, you can see the learning. And in one circle, we have the teaching and the learning and vice versa paan, vice versa ang record or um, arrow because the teacher or makagets ta, makakwata learning from teaching and from the learning, it teaches us to do something. That is why vice versa ang teaching and learning. So included here are um, the subject matter and the knowledge the student grasp. Second is ang classroom. Ang classroom ay sunod sa teaching and learning because here in the classroom, this is where the interaction happens. And then the school, of course, and the society. So before we go to the society, we have this um, school as the agent of change. Now remember, society is a source of change. Okay? Because na natin sa gawa sa society and it teaches us to do something, to be like this and to be like that. School is an agent of change because it serves as the agent or something that would be the reason for us to change, right? And knowledge is also an agent of change, all right? So, muna siya. Next is John Dewey. John Dewey is a very famous person when especially ka nang to this sa... Uh, library sa ito ang mga teachers, no? Dito tayo magklase, din pa may mga rise ng Dewey Decimal System. Kasi nakatry ng Dewey Decimal System, yung pa may mga rise ta. Now, muna siya si John Dewey ang proponent at ito. And he considered the two fundamental elements. Kung sa gi-consider ni John Dewey, the schools and civil society. So, to be major topics needing attention and reconstruction to encourage experimental intelligence and plurality. So, ang gi-consider ni John Dewey, are these two fundamental elements ang school and civil society because he was thinking about um, the major topics that need attention and reconstruction. That is why we are including the society and the school and in, um, teaching and learning process or um, as foundation sa curriculum. Next is Alvin Toffler. Now, si Alvin Toffler, he, we all know that this person is not that famous. No, hindi ka siya famous, but daghan siya og na-contribute. So, he wrote the book, Future Shock, 
and he believed that knowledge should prepare students for the future. Future. So, saying believan, um, knowledge should prepare the students for the future. And he also suggested that in the future, parents must have the resources prescribed. Um curriculum from home as a result of technology. So their students mangod or their children who are homeschooled, that is why, according to him, dapat ang um, future or in the future, ang parents nasad mga certain resources nga prescribed sa curriculum nga magamit nila sa homeschooling of their children. And lastly, he foresaw schools and students work creatively. So that but there is a partnership. Um, there's a certain connection with the schools and the students so that they can work collaboratively, positively, and creatively para pun makahams mga students independently. That is from Alvin Toffler. Okay, so for your quiz, it would be done or for your pre-final exam preliminary exam rather it would be done next week um in the form of a um an a an interactive quiz um this is a total of 40 points so please do study this continuation of our um discussion so that it would be easier for you to understand everything written on your module so that is for today guys this is the continuation of our module two i hope that you have understood everything so congratulations for um um, watching this video on your own convenience. So goodbye class and see you on our next meeting which is asynchronous um, teaching and learning.